All right, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a copper two sulfate solution using sulfuric acid and water. Uh, of course, you need a voltage source as well with this. Uh, for my voltage source, I'm using a typical car charger, car battery charger. That is, uh, this one's got a six volt and twelve volt setting. Uh, I start out with a mason jar, clean it. Um, here I've got some warm tap water. I just turned on the hot faucet and let it warm up and then uh, filled that coffee pitcher up with it. Uh, now I'm going to fill this jar most of the way. Um, as far as proportion, um, after this water I'm going to add sulfuric acid and you want about four parts water to one part acid. Um, the same process can be done with vinegar. Uh, you don't need the water to dilute it um, if you're using vinegar and it'd be a little safer. Um, but the acid works a lot faster. There, the sulfuric acid works a lot faster. For my sulfuric acid source, uh, I've got typical battery electrolyte. Uh, I got this from AutoZone for four dollars a quart. Uh, as far as uh, acids go, sulfuric acid uh, is relatively weak. Uh, however, when mixed with water, it can be quite corrosive, so you want to be careful. And if you get it on your skin, it can cause irritation and acid burn. So. Um, I use gloves whenever I handle it. At several points I got a little bit of acid on my skin. It's no big deal. It won't burn you immediately. Uh, you just gotta head over to the faucet and uh, rinse it off. You don't want to let it sit on your, on your skin for too long. Um, now remember whenever you add the acid to Whenever you mix acid and water, you never want to add water to acid. Uh, when you mix the two, it creates heat. Uh, the solution heats up. You always want to be able to control that increase in temperature by adding acid to the water. Uh, like I said, four to one. I use about one part acid. You need just enough to dissolve that copper. And uh, so we've got water, we've got acid. Now I need to make uh, uh, two electrodes. Um, of course, you've got to have a copper source. Uh, why not make two electrodes out of copper? You have your copper source and electrode in one. So, uh, I've got some just leftover household uh, wire. I did some electrical work on my house, and uh, I've got this wire left over. Uh, so, I've cut a length of it, and I'm stripping off both ends. Uh, this is going to be the cathode. It's going to be the electrode that lies along the bottom of the jar. I'm stripping off a smaller portion on one end to connect to the battery and the longer portion on the other end I'm going to uh, twist up into a spiral shape uh, just to add surface area and so it'll uh, sit neatly on the bottom of the jar. And uh, for this electrode I intentionally left most of it uh, insulated so that there won't be contact with the electrode anywhere except the very bottom of the wire. Uh, now the cathode is going to be the uh, electrode that um, adds the copper to the solution. The copper will be coming off of this wire and being dissolved into the solution once you pass current through it. Um, and that's why you want it to lie on the bottom because the copper is uh, denser and uh, if it comes off uh, near the bottom then it'll stay along the bottom being denser. Uh, this is important because if you have both electrodes along the bottom, um, then some of the copper will come into solution from the cathode and then immediately uh, go to the anode and uh, start collecting on the anode. And uh, separating them, having the anode on the top and the cathode on the bottom just makes for a more efficient process. It doesn't take as long and you get more copper dissolved in solution. I'm just measuring this one for uh, a length that will allow it to sit just barely under the surface. Now, uh, like I said, my voltage source has uh, 6 volt and 12 volt settings. I'm going to use uh, the 6 volt setting just because I've got time. If I was in a hurry, the 12 volt setting would work a little faster, but um, I also wanted to avoid heat buildup in the wires. Now 
it's on the 6 volt setting let's see how close to that we get five and a half volts that'll do now remember um, when you connect the battery to your electrodes uh, the black one which is the anode connects to the electrode on the top uh, it connects to the one on the top because the uh, copper will be entering solution on the cathode on the bottom and you want it to stay on the bottom uh, as you can see there's already a blue uh, solution along the bottom uh, just from a little test I did just off camera beforehand for only a few seconds uh, it happens pretty quickly and as you can see there's bubbles there's bubbles of hydrogen coming off of the uh, off of the uh, anode there along the top off of the top electrode. Uh, it's pretty vigorous. Um, I set this. Uh, I set this up. I put it back down in the in the plate just for the video. I end up moving everything underneath my fume fume hood to avoid uh, uh, hydrogen gas buildup, which is explosive. And after about an hour, hour and a half, uh, this is the color we end up with. Cleaned everything away, and I'm ready to fill up my bin with copper two sulfate solution and start electroplating. And that's all there is. Of course, you can let this dry and get copper two sulfate crystals and save for a later time. Thanks for watching.